Hi everybody, this is Carter Lee, uh, writer and producer of Alpha City News. I wanted to apologize for, again, for there being uh, no show for the past two weeks. I've been moving, and it turned out to be a bit more of a chore than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but thank you for your patience, and uh, I hope you enjoy this show. It's going to be a little shorter than a normal one, uh, simply because I haven't had time to write and record. But hopefully, this coming week, we will be back to full-time, although even if we're not, there will be something next week as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for listening, and uh, have a super day. From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, from your city to the world and beyond, this is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was temporal madness in Northside Monday as the so-called Tempest Fugitives, Father Time and Grandfather Paradox, fought the Tomorrow Knots. Reports indicate that the fugitives were attempting to stop a meeting between the grandparents of the designer of the temporal jail from which they had escaped in the far future, thus keeping the prison from ever existing. The Tempest Fugitives have been regular opponents of the cosmic hero Empyrean, and have fought both the Hero Union and other teams from history, including the wartime Golden Battalion and the Victorian-era Queensmen. Their aim has always been to reorganize time to allow them to establish a world-girdling empire under their control. The Tomorrow Knots, by contrast, are a shadowy group claiming to protect the proper flow of time employed by godlike beings from the end of time itself. Their membership seems vast and drawn from all ages of the earth, past and future. It has been observed to include Viking warriors and Greek hoplites, Roman legionaries, soldiers from both world wars, prehistoric giant humanoids, and what could be battle-suited soldiers from the future. Each tomorrow knot wears high-tech armor based on their home period and while they claim to be working for the greater good, at least some reports show them aiding villains in destruction and mayhem. The Bright Man, who has had some dealings with them, theorizes that their far future masters care nothing for good and evil, but simply wish to ensure that nothing changes the events which have led to their own future coming into being. As such, it is almost impossible to know on any given occasion that they may appear if they will act to help or hinder. On Monday, however, the Tomorrow Knots appeared mere seconds after the fugitives made their presence known and moved quickly to stop the pair. While the battle took mere moments from the perspective of those outside the affected area, several civilians caught in the crossfire described finding themselves suddenly returned to childhood or age to senility remembering things that they somehow knew would not occur until sometime in their personal future, and watching inanimate objects being similarly twisted back and forth through time. In contrast to those outside the battle zone, those inside said that the combat seemed to take an almost unendurably long time. When the battle ended, the Tempest fugitives were bound in strips of mercury-like metal at the center of the combat area, and as the Tomorrow Knots departed, other temporal police officers appeared, who seemed to be from the period from which the fugitives had escaped. These officers removed Father Time and Grandfather Paradox, no doubt returning them to their future incarceration. When ACPD officers inspected the scene, they found seven civilians who had been caught in the temporal combat. Six were referred to city-provided therapists who will be helping them to deal with the new perspective of time their experiences had given them and the psychological effects stemming therefrom. The seventh initially appeared to be an unidentified, unconscious man of extremely advanced age who was taken to the nearest hospital. After a short time, though, doctors discovered that the man, eventually identified as Samuel Kindler, age six, was rapidly growing younger, and he was transferred to Eisner University's School of Supermedicine, 
where specialists and his concerned parents are watching over him. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. If any Alpha Citizens would like to get in touch with me, uh, you can drop an email to alphacitynews at gmail.com. If you'd like to go further than that, you can sponsor the show by going to patreon.com and searching for Alpha City News. I've got some cool things that the first patrons will get, so check it out. See if any of them light your fire. Again, that's at patreon.com under Alpha City News. I'd hugely appreciate it also if you would leave a review at iTunes or comment at rhymeswithgeek.com. Rhymeswithgeek.com, in addition to hosting my podcast, is also a great place to get the latest news, reviews, and podcasts about all things comic related. You should check them out. They're pretty cool. So until next time, Alpha Citizens, have a great week. <laughs>